If you saw him in the street, he wouldn't rate a second glance. He looks so ordinary, but he's not. Armand Mivas is a cannibal. In March 2001, he killed a man and ate him, along with a glass of fine red wine. A crime so bizarre, it horrified and mystified the world. You see, Mivas's victim was a willing accomplice. He actually wanted to be eaten. A rare case of what they call love cannibalism. Now you're going to meet this quiet, unassuming man who became a monster. For the first time, he tells his chilling story. And I should warn that at times it's quite graphic and could distress some viewers. Armin Mivas is 46, a quiet, polite man who grew up in a loving family in a small town in Germany. But make no mistake, he is also a modern day monster. His crime so horrific, there were no laws to cover it, no words in medical journals to describe his mental state. My name, Armin Mavis. I was born 1961. I'm computer engineer from Rothenburg, Germany. I killed a man, flogged at him and ate him. Since then, he is always with me. On the morning of December 10, 2002, police in Rotenburg, Germany, acting on a tip-off, raided this isolated farmhouse. In the kitchen, they found a freezer with a false bottom, concealing what Mivas claimed were packets of wild pig. But it wasn't wild pig. It was the flesh of this man, Bernd Brandis. There was no disputing what Mivas had done, and he never denied it. When the body is to be eaten, it has to be dead, that's clear. It tastes like pork, a bit more harsh, substantial. A Frankfurt court found Mivas guilty of murder and sentenced him to life imprisonment. And now, in an unprecedented interview from his jail cell, Mivas gives a chilling account of that terrible night. Also, for the first time, Mivas' lawyer, Harold Ermel, reveals the crime scene itself. We are coming to the slaughter room. The house where Mivas slaughtered his victim and dined on the flesh. Eat the flesh, a steak or a beef with red wine and potatoes. And he, it was very important for Mr. Mivas to eat it. Eight years ago, Armin Mivas posted an advertisement on the internet. He made contact with Bernd Brandis, an engineer from Berlin. They found they had a bond. Mivas wanted to eat a man. Brandis wanted to be eaten. We've been emailing and chatting on the internet since January. And we talked about exactly what he would happen. This was what Mivas had craved all his life, a man of the 21st century who harbored the primitive instincts of a cannibal. Armin Mivas is a very good example of a man who lived a double life. Gunther Stumpf is a journalist who regularly visits Mivas in jail and has gained a unique insight into his background. He went on sailing trips with his friends. Uh, he was a very normal neighbor. On the other hand, he was a monster in the media who was dining on human flesh. But Mivas hardly had the makings of a monster. Speaking through a translator in his native tongue of German, he describes the ideal surroundings of his childhood. We'd build tree houses, play cops and robbers and Indians. Everything that was fun. Or we chopped down trees. It was lovely, really. But Mivas's carefree existence was shattered when, without warning, his father deserted him and his mother. It was a critical turning point. The young Mivas retreated into a fantasy world and invented imaginary friends to keep him company. But it wasn't enough. He wanted to feel more connected to these friends, that they should be part of him. And so began his deadly obsession. And then I thought that if they were to become a part of me, I'd have to eat them. 
When he hit puberty, he had the same crushes as other boys did, but he found it difficult to form relationships. And these crushes developed into something more, the desire to eat someone so that they've always with him. But even in his fantasies, Mivas wanted his victim to be a willing partner. He had to go into this inner connection willingly. It wouldn't have been possible any other way. He had to practically sacrifice his life so that he could carry on living in me. That was how I saw it anyway. His obsession grew but remained an unattainable dream until his mother died. Free of her domineering influence, Mivas could finally indulge his cannibalistic fantasy. Around this time, I had somehow stumbled on cannibal sites, cannibal chat rooms. I took a good look at them and thought they were just fantasy. But there are so many ads, you couldn't believe it. There were people offering themselves to be eaten and were looking for people to eat them. When Mavis told me about the other people he met before Brandes, his victim, or after uh, his victim, I was really shocked. There were people which wanted to be barbecued like a chicken. There were people which uh, wanted to be hit with a hammer and then slaughtered. But none of them was suitable. None of them willing to see it through. Then along came Brandis. Bernd Brandes. I'd replied to an ad he put on the internet. The strap line was dinner or your dinner. And the text was, I'm offering you the chance to eat me alive. Who really wants it needs a genuine victim. In Bernd Brandes, Mivas had found his ideal victim, someone whose fantasies provided the perfect counterpoint to his own. In March 2001, Mivas met Brandes at a train station near Rosenberg and drove him home. We arrived home and he went straight into the living room and undressed, so that I could admire dinner, or my dinner, he said. He came into the house with Brandes. From here, they went through the hall into the dining room. Then through the living room and straight into the winter garden. The winter garden faces the street. At the time of the deed, this terrible deed, the shutters were open and Brandes started to undress. He looked good. He had a sporty figure, as I'd imagined. He was a very nice, lovely man. Then the two came this way, upstairs to the second floor, to the so-called slaughter room, where later the terrible deed took place. He wanted to experience the ultimate high. And for him, that was to be eaten alive. That for him would be ultimate bliss. The men made a diabolical pact. Mivas would cut off parts of Brandis's body while he was still conscious. It was agreed they would film the entire episode. The result was so shocking that police have now locked away the video, never to be released. We discussed everything beforehand, including the camera, which should be switched on because he wanted to see for himself what it was like when we did the amputation. He wanted to experience pain that was so bad it would kill him, pain that would destroy him. Obviously he yelled, he was standing at the table and he sprang backwards. The blood was spurting out, and after 30 seconds, he stopped yelling and said, it doesn't hurt anymore. But the wound wasn't enough to kill Brandis, and Mivas hesitated over what to do next. I prayed. 
At that moment, I didn't know what to do. I asked myself whether I should pray to the devil or God. And I asked God for forgiveness. Then I took the knife, grasped it in my hand, and after hesitating some more, I cut his throat with it. Then in the slaughter room, after he was dead, I separated the head from his body. I hung him from the ceiling. Then I removed his organs and cut him in half. I poured hot water over the two halves and washed the body. It was on this table that Mavis ate parts of Pandas. He took his good dinner service from this cupboard at the back here and put it on the table. He lit candles, took out a good bottle of red wine and prepared the meal and then he ate parts of Pandas. The first bite was of course very strange. It was a feeling I, I can't really describe. I'd spent over 40 years, 30 years, longing for it, dreaming about it. And now I was getting the feeling that I was actually achieving this perfect inner connection through his flesh. Flesh tastes like pork, but stronger, more substantial. Although I don't think that other people would have noticed the difference had they eaten it. It tasted really good. Over a period of months, he consumed 20 kilos of the flesh, all the while continuing to search the internet for more willing victims until a young Austrian student became suspicious and alerted authorities. Five months later, dozens of police swooped on Mivas's farmhouse to search the property. And there was a policewoman within the troop. And uh, she's, she asked Mivas, so what kind of meat do you have in the fridge? And I said, no, this is just normal animal meat. And uh, she looked at him and said, you know, I'm a housewife. I know that this is not normal meat. The case posed a legal dilemma. There is no German law against cannibalism, and Brandis was clearly a willing victim. Mivas was initially convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to only eight and a half years in prison. But a retrial convicted him of murder and he was sentenced to life in jail. But even now, no one can be sure that Mivas regrets his crime. I think regret is a too, too, too strong word for Mivas. I think he's starting to realize that what he did was wrong. And it's a slowly process. I did not feel that he really regret uh, the slaughtering and eating of Brandes deeply. Today, I know that what I did was wrong. That this can never be the right way. The wishes, the fantasies you have, that these can never ever be fulfilled. And everything that you dream about will only ever remain a dream. What I did, even after I've done it, I always thought it could be more than just a dream. Today, I know that it can never be. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.